Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video, and I want to welcome you to another episode. Before we look at this week's blog post, I want to give you a reminder to check out the Go Collect Swag Shop. And if you use my discount code Reggie, you can save yourself a couple of bucks if you decide to pick up some merch. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at our first blog post. And this blog post is actually the third installment in an ongoing series in which the blogger looks at some comics that are making some sneaky moves. All of the books that are identified in this blog post are associated with a mainstay of the MCU. And I am specifically talking about Iron Man. And the blogger essentially asked the question as to whether Iron Man is an ironclad investment. And over the course of this blog post, the blogger is looking at some books, again, that are making some major moves. The book that has made the most moves this month is Iron Man issue number 102. And this book has moved nearly 700 spots on the Bronze Age list. This book is not a key. It is not a key at all, but it is moving up the list. And yes, it features a George Perez cover and a pretty unique story in which Iron Man and Frankenstein team up to fight a character known as the Dread Knight, but that doesn't necessarily explain why this book is performing well. And I don't know why. And I'm curious whether you might have some insight here. And if you do, I definitely want to encourage you to leave those thoughts down in the comment section. There have also been a lot of other books that are moving and shaking associated with Iron Man. We are specifically talking about issue number 42, issue 50, 53, 62, and Iron Man 68. And again, none of these books are major keys, but they are definitely performing pretty well when you look at the Bronze Age. And it begs the question as to what's going on with Iron Man? Our next blogger is asking a pretty provocative question. And the question is whether investors got it wrong with Miss Marvel. And, and this question really is centered around the book that is believed to be the first appearance of Miss Marvel. And the blogger is basically suggesting that this book may actually be more of a cameo than anything else. And the book that we are specifically talking about is Marvel Superheroes issue number 13. Now, when you take a look at this book, essentially what you see is that Carol Danvers is pictured a total of five times in five different panels across two pages. She is also mentioned by name a total of two times. Now, when you contrast that to Miss Marvel issue number one, what you see is that she is actually on the cover, she is Miss Marvel, she is named and pictured throughout the entire comic. But when you look at the values that are associated with these two books, there is a little bit of a difference there. Well, honestly, there's a massive difference between these two books. According to Go Collect, the FMV of a CGC 9.8 copy of Marvel Super Heroes is $31,000. That's more than 30 times the value of a CGC 9.8 copy of Miss Marvel issue number one. There are some indications that investors are moving away from Marvel Super Heroes issue number 13. And the blogger says this because over the last few weeks, this book has fallen almost 500 places on the Bronze Age book list that is highlighted on Go Collect. Now, contrast that to Miss Marvel issue number one, which has actually moved up seven spots to currently rest at the 22nd spot 
on the Go Collect most popular Bronze Age comic book list. This blog post is an interesting one and I do encourage you to check it out. It is linked down in the description. Our next blogger has put together a pretty interesting blog post. And it is a blog post that is focused on the relationship that exists between movies and comics. Now, I do a series on my channel, Reggie Collects, in which I talk about obscure comics. So I'm into different types of books. But there are a couple in this blog post that I honestly was not aware of. And one of them, for example, is a Die Hard comic. I love Die Hard the movie. I did not know that it was also a comic book as well. And in this post, the blogger highlights the fact that this was actually an eight-part series that was a prequel to the Die Hard movie. And this comic was actually called Die Hard Year One. And again, it was an eight-part series detailing a few of Detective McClane's exploits leading up to the 1988 film Die Hard. Over the course of this blog post, the blogger highlights a few other comics that are associated with movies. If you are into this, you may want to check out this blog post. And what I can tell you is that none of these books are terribly expensive. You can actually pick these books up in a few different places for just a couple of bucks. And so if you're into movies and comics, this is a blog post that you want to read. So I just finished watching episode four of the WandaVision show. And I will tell you, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> if you haven't seen this show, I definitely want to encourage you guys to check it out. I struggled personally a little bit with episodes one and two. I felt like episode three was heading in the right direction. Episode four was pretty solid. It did not disappoint. And our next blogger has actually put together, I think, a pretty solid blog post as well that basically says, now is the time to sell. Specifically, if you have books that are associated with Mephisto, you want to sell those books right now. And our blogger, again, puts together a pretty compelling argument that is actually supported by some data as well. Five years ago, a 9.6, a CGC 9.6 copy of Silver Surfer issue number three sold for $960. Just last month, that same book, CGC 9.6 sold for $6,100, which is roughly a 600% increase in that book. And here's the thing, Mephisto hasn't even appeared. We don't even know truly if Mephisto is going to appear, but there are a lot of rumors. There is a lot of speculation out there that everything that is happening in the WandaVision show is basically being driven by Mephisto because people have seen these, these Easter eggs and cookies and little nuggets in, in the show that have led them to believe that it is all about Mephisto. And so here's the thing. What happens if Mephisto isn't behind this stuff? What happens to the values of that comic, specifically Silver Surfer issue number three? What happens if he doesn't appear? To that point, the blogger is basically saying, now is the time. But in addition to Silver Surfer issue number three, the blogger highlights a few other books that you may want to consider selling as well if you have them in your possession. This next blog post contains, I think, some pretty sage advice. If you listen to the previous clips, the previous blog posts, we talked about some books that are selling incredibly well, pretty high sales prices. If you listen to the Behind the Blog podcast that we do, we also talk about some high flying books. If you just look at eBay, you know that prices for comics are pretty high right now. And our next blogger does a really solid job of offering up to people some things to consider, some ways to maybe navigate these waters. And the very first piece of advice that is offered is to pull and pause. And basically what the blogger is saying is that if you are chasing books that are coming out right now, new books, and you're chasing those books, you may need to start using your pull list to 
put you in a better position to get those books for cover price because you are actually putting them on your pull list. You don't have to go out and find them, especially after, you know, the book has taken off and, you know, surplus has been absorbed by people that are hunting for that book, that are getting to the LCSs before you. So the, the blogger is basically saying, use your pull list to stay ahead of the curve, especially if there are characters and titles and books that you are interested in. The, the pause part is the blogger basically saying, you may have to put a pause on things because of FOMO, because of the sky high prices, you may have to put a pause on buying lots of books, especially back issue books until you can take a step back and kind of assess and evaluate what is actually happening. And more importantly, what actually makes you happy from a collector's standpoint. One other piece of advice that the blogger offers in this post is to actually trade up. And, and there's a lot to this part of it, but the blogger is basically saying to take a look at the books that are in your collection, evaluate what you want, what you love, and maybe what you can give up, what you can do without, what you don't care about. And maybe you leverage those books to get other books that you truly want. This blog post is linked down in the description. I encourage you to check this one out. This next blog post is entitled, Should Amazing Spider-Man 51 Be Considered the First Full Appearance of Kingpin? Over the course of this blog post, the blogger is basically putting forth an argument that Amazing Spider-Man 51 is similar to Hulk 181, in which Wolverine actually makes his first appearance. Now, I could buy into that concept. I could buy into that. The challenge is that when you actually look at Amazing Spider-Man 50, it has a lot going for it. Besides the fact that it has an iconic cover, arguably one of the most iconic covers in all of comics, when you set that aside and you actually look at how many times the Kingpin is shown and or mentioned in this comic, in my mind, it is well above that of a cameo appearance. In, in this instance, in the instance of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 50, this is what you see if you go through the comic. And I did. Went through it kind of quickly, so I may have missed some things. But when I went through it, what I saw was that the Kingpin was shown in seven different panels. And he was mentioned a total of 12 times by name. In my mind, that is not an appetizer. That is an entree. And that doesn't take a lot away from one, I'm sorry, from 51. 51 is still a great book, but it's still, in my mind, not the first appearance of Kingpin. I do want to encourage you guys to go back and look at these books, count it up, count it up. And then honestly, read the blog post. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. I am eagerly, eagerly looking forward to hearing what your thoughts are. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another episode. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch. And if you enjoyed, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button and then tune in next week when we get to do this all over again.